African American Heritage Culture Center is excited about presenting our oral histories. So we began with the Great Fire of New Bern that occurred in 1922, and we found that out of that fire, the African American community was able to come back much better. In fact, the fire let us know that we really needed a hospital for African Americans, and so we were able to get a hospital, Good Shepherd Hospital, located on West Street. Also, during that time, Jim Crow, if you're familiar with that time, all the things that happened, African Americans were not able to stay in hotels. That's just it. But at any rate, after the fire, the Roan sisters, Charlotte and Henrietta and Amy, built a hotel. And that building is also still standing. We also included in our opening of our oral history the Charlotte Roan Culture Center, which really opened as the first library for Negroes in New Bern. It was the Negro Library located also on West Street, directly across from the old Good Shepherd Hospital. So we are very excited about our history. We've added to it today by having had our representative from the Appa Kappa Alpha Sorority, Theta Beta Omega Chapter, to come in and share the New Bern history of AKA right here in New Bern. And there will be more, more, many more stories to come because there are much more to be told. We will be doing other sororities while we will be doing local African-American churches uh, that have very rich histories whose stories have not been told. And that story will go out and many others after that. So thank you so much to our listeners And please, please come back to hear the other stories of our region of African-American life in New Bern, North Carolina. Thank you. Good afternoon, Natasha. Good afternoon. Let me begin by saying that um, the African-American Heritage Culture Center is so excited and thankful that the Theta Beta Omega chapter of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority has agreed to participate in our oral history presentation. It is very vital and important to our, to our local African American history that all of our stories are told. Yes. And so we are so grateful that you all agreed to participate in this event and in what will become a piece of historical archives for the African American Heritage Culture Center, along with other partnering oral histories that we will be accumulating through the years, because a part of our mission and our goal is to make sure that the region's African American history story is presented, preserved, and alive in our area. So with that said, let's get into our conversation for this afternoon. All right. Um, I'm excited for you to share with our listeners the beginning of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. All right. And and I just want to say thank you for allowing us to share the story. I'm definitely honored to be here with you today. All right. So Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated was founded January 15, 1908, on the campus of Howard University by Ethel Hedgeman Lyle. Five years later, January 29, 1913, lead incorporator Nellie Quander ensured the sorority's perpetuity through incorporation. The sorority started with humble beginnings as the vision of nine college students. But since then, the sorority has flourished into a globally impactful organization of over 300,000 college-trained women. Our international president is Dr. Glenda Glover, and the theme of her administration is exemplifying excellence through sustainable service. Our mission is to cultivate and encourage high scholastic and ethical standards, to promote unity and friendship among college women, to study and help alleviate problems concerning girls and women in order to improve their social stature, to maintain progressive interests in college life, and to be of service to all mankind. Awesome, awesome vision. Yes. <laughs> okay, now, well, how did it get to New Bern, North Carolina? Well, 
Theta Beta Omega Chapter was chartered November 21st, 1964 by 20 amazing women. And those women are Adelaide Booker, Arabelle Bryant, Ruby Bowie, Mary Daniels, Martha Faison, Norma Gadet, Alma Gaither, Marie Jones, Bernice McElrath, Otis Bell Myers, Frances Newby, Clara Owens, Blanche Rivers, Ann Sawyer, Fanny Slade, Nora Slade, Annie Day Smith, Loretta Smith, Jesse White, and Clifford Wooten. And just to give you a little information about some of them, Adelaide Booker was a first grade teacher at West Street High School. Arabelle Bryant was a librarian at West Street High. And also during Arabelle's presidency, she had a wheelchair loan program. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, Mary Daniels taught French at West Street High School. Martha Faison's husband was the administrator of Good Shepherd Hospital and the owner of Smith's Drugstore. During Clara Owen's presidency, the chapter held a fashion showcase. Nora Slade was the second president, and under her presidency, we had the first induction. Loretta Smith wrote the school song for J.T. Barber, and she was also a teacher. Jessie White was the third and fourth president, and she was also my piano teacher. <laughs> my daughters, too. <laughs> so as you can see, even in that, the, the small list that I gave you, there were a lot of women that were very impactful to our community. It was indeed. I recognized a lot of those names. Yes. Uh, being inactive now, but also having been a student in school, I can remember Mrs. Daniels. I yes. remember Mrs. Arabelle Bryant yes. was our librarian, historian at J.T. Barber High School. Definitely. And um, Mrs. Ann Sawyer Moore. Yes. Uh, taught me geometry. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I do recognize a, a lot of those names, Mrs. O.B. Myers mm -hmm. and, and others. Yes, definitely, so, definitely. And they did continue, those, they did continue to contribute so much to yes. not only um, the organization, but our community in so many, many different ways. Definitely. Uh, I heard you mention Mrs. Loretta Smith. Yes. Um, she was instrumental in working with the team who got the radio station on the campus of Craven Community College. Oh, wow. And a lot of other things that she did. She worked with the Craven County uh, concert, that, and she was always, you know, making sure that um, she participated and brought the African-American community into the, the concerts as they came to town. That's, that's beautiful. Lot, all, they were all leaders. Yes. That's your name. Yes. Of the ones that I recognize and I know the ones. A couple of them are still living. I believe Mrs. Norma Gannett. Yes, Dad, yes. Mrs. Dorothy Bryan, who was yes. also mm -hmm. uh, one of our. Yes, yes, yes. And yet that's exactly. At New Bern City Schools. Right, right. So that's right. not just impressive in the sense of being impressive, but it was solid to the, they were solid to the contributions that they made to our community definitely and to know that theta beta omega is still going strong yes 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 you lead yes. it now here at the local chapter uh, yes yes ma'am i am the um the current president of theta beta omega chapter and it's just such an honor to to lead such extraordinary women that are s such a crucial aspect of our community i do you, yeah. yeah i mean so much work has been done and so we're going to go back now and you know, let's talk about uh, some of the programs. Yes. Or yes. some of the whatever else you want to share with us. Sure, sure, sure. So I just want to go back a little bit back into the history. Oh, um, please. Don't want to be in it. That's 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 it. That's no, no, no. That's capturing fine. history. <laughs> me. I just, no, those no, no. Names just brought back. So I know. I believe memories it. Yes. So many um, co contributions that they each made, and I do yes. want to. Not it, not. No, no, it's beautiful. I, I, I love it. I love it. So um, Theta Beta Omega Chapter of New Bern was the 198th graduate chapter established by Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. There were one of five that was chartered in 1964. And um, Theta Beta Omega was an outgrowth of Zeta Omicron Omega in Kinston, North Carolina. Martha Faison was the first president of Theta Beta Omega. May I stop you right Yes, ma'am. Where her granddaughter is my cousin. Oh, really? 
really? And just yeah, just um, yeah. Yesterday, early yesterday morning, I was getting dressed, and my phone pinged with a message, and she had just joined. <laughs> she told me, I said, "What?" Well, and that she had on her pink and green, mm -hmm. and she had the, the right signs up. And so I said, oh, I'm surprised. She said, yeah, I just went over yesterday. Oh, my goodness. So, yes, and I told her. <laughs> well, congratulations. I, her, I know her. I think she called her Nana. Yeah. I said, I know your Nana's in heaven with pink and green. I am. Green. <laughs> no, I know she is just ecstatic, right? Oh, that's beautiful. It is. That is beautiful. So I'm sorry you were talking about Mrs. Spacey. Oh no, that she was. I was just saying that she was the. I'm um, the first president of Theta Beta Omega. That's that was just icing on the that cake, right perfect. there. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. It just came in. Yes, <laughs> that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, the signature program was uh, the debutante ball and is still the debutante ball. The first one that was held in New Bern, North Carolina, was actually held in 1956, which was before Theta Beta Omega was chartered. And the ball was such a huge success that it became the signature program for Theta Beta Omega. This activity has not only served as a fundraiser for scholarships and other community programs, but it's also provided educational and cultural enrichment activities for young women and men in the Tri-County area. I was the queen in 1995 when um, they held the Bow and Bell Cotillion. And at that time, it was actually an event for middle school age um, girls and boys. And that's why it means so much to me to be president at, the, at this year where we're having a debutante ball. Um, our 32nd triennial debutante ball is called A Night of Perfection. It's actually going to be held on June the 18th of 2022 at 7 p.m. And it meant a lot for the chapter to make sure that we made this process meaningful for the 11 young ladies that we are presenting to society. And some of the activities that we provided for them were um, a pretty paint night, which was a whole lot of fun. We had the Confident Queen's Charm and Etiquette Workshop, which you were a part of. The Financial Literacy Workshop, because that's something that a lot of young people don't get a lot of information and on. And it is so crucial. It's critical. It is It's now. critical. So we really wanted to make sure that we had a financial literacy workshop. We did a, um, a yoga and self-care workshop, which is very critical these days, too, especially since we're in the middle of a, a pandemic. We, yeah, we have to take care of ourselves mentally and physically. Um, and we did several HBCU virtual tours. Those were my favorite activity, getting to have the representatives from all the different HBCUs to come and just tell us about the university. And they did um, actual virtual tours where they showed like videos of their campuses and oh. we can see college life and what their dorms look like and just giving information about scholarships and the different programs, academic programs that they have at the different colleges. That was just so awesome. Some of the universities that participated. We had, of course, Federal State University, because that's where I went. Okay. <laughs> Federal State, we had um, St. Aug, we had North Carolina Central, North Carolina A&T. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. There's um, University of Louisiana. No, Xavier University oh, of Louisiana. Okay. And I think I'm missing one. I think there was one other, but I can't think of which one it was. But you we said central too, so that was yes, great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had central. <laughs> My but yeah, alma yes, it it was awesome, and just to just to see the representatives come and <clears throat> excuse me and see the. The, the young ladies interact with them, and some of them actually chose colleges based off of these workshops that we presented for them. It was just, it was such a beautiful thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent of promoting our HBCUs. Yes. yes. It's important. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, the other thing about our debutante ball this year that's very different is that it's virtual. So we have been doing debutante ball for a long time, but this is the first time we had to do a virtual one. And it was very different. We had to learn a lot of new skills and network with a lot of different people in order to pull it together because there's a lot of um, videos that we have to take and try to put together that we haven't done before. So it was very, uh, very much so a new thing, but it, it turned out 
from what from what we can what we've put together so far to be very a very positive experience, and um, I'm excited to seeing the the finished result of it next weekend. Now, will it be available to the public? Yes, or? it will be available okay. to the public. So um, we don't have the public link for it yet, mm -hmm. but more than likely it'll be out either this weekend or the beginning of next week. So we'll have it out soon, and it'll be on our social media. Okay. Yes. So that, that'll make it available. Right. Yes. It, it will definitely be available for everyone to to review, and I'm I'm just very proud because it was it was a lot of work from for the ladies in in, in the chapter to pull together, but they, we pulled it together, and it was, it was beautiful. <laughs> That's what we do. That's right. <laughs> now say the date and time. It is yes. June the 18th, which is not this Saturday, but, but the next Saturday at 7 p.m. Okay. Well, good, good. Well, I know it'll be a very fantastic event. Yes, I am looking forward to it. I'm sure that will be. <laughs> I know the girls are excited. Yes. So you all have 11. 11. Your yes, it is very 11. Good. Mm -hmm. Very good. I very much enjoyed the workshop that I held with them. Yes. We call it the Charm Clinic. Yes, the Charm Clinic. And learning about <laughs> etiquette. Right. Their ticket to society. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, indeed. I, I enjoyed that. That's awesome. I heard good things about it, so that's, that's I, awesome. I enjoyed that's it. awesome. And um, you had asked about some of the, the past programs. Um, I mentioned earlier in um, Claire Rowan's administration, they had the Fashion Showcase and that was in 1972, where they did a presentation of Hamilton Vogue Esquire models of Chicago, and that was the, the showcase in 1972. Some of the other programs that we've had throughout the years were um, numerous clothing and food drives, providing coats and gloves to children in the wintertime, doing Thanksgiving baskets for um, families in need during Thanksgiving, volunteering at Hope Lodge, um, providing backpacks and school supplies for kids during the, the school year and providing annual scholarships. That is so important to instill in our young people yes. the importance of service. Right, yes. Going beyond ourselves, mm -hmm. seek the needs of others. Exactly. And uh, I, I know that that instilled a lot in them. Yes. And it helped our community. It helped someone. And that is the most important. Exactly. It's, it's such it's a beautiful just thing. It's a project we did know. Right. But it is. It, it does it helps people and that's the most important thing in all that we learn and all that we do yes we're here for each other exactly yep we are blessed to be a blessing amen that's right <laughs> amen. and um uh, yes yeah, so our some of the recent projects that we've been doing of course is our mlk um day of service that we do at rcs that's another um, project that I love, just being able to go there. You know, I, I can remember having gone uh, doing one of yes. those days, MLK Day. Yes. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoy it. Yes, I, it's I always really such a blessing to, to be able to, to serve you, others. You, you sincerely feel better inward. Right. When you have done something to help, when you put a hand in to help. Exactly. And it was a beautiful experience. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. And I know there has been um, some occasions where we had some younger children come in and help volunteer with us, and they also just love it. They enjoy the experience. And it's a, just like you said, just being able to show the younger generation the importance of volunteering and helping others is always a beautiful thing. And there's a, a fellowship that actually happens. Yes. Uh, we get to demonstrate the love that we should have one for another. Right. And you learn it more when you're doing it more. Exactly. You know better, you do better. Exactly. And we grow together. Yes, yes indeed, yes indeed. Okay, so we cover pretty much of the uh, programs. Um, uh, do you have anything else? I was looking, remembering a program. In fact, I brought the program along with me after we had talked, and I just picked it up when I was leaving out the door. I was thinking, I said, it came in my mind, and I hope I can find it. <laughs> but uh, it was the Theta Beta Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha Sororities presentation of a cultured pearl gala, mm -hmm. and it it helped. We did this the year that I was active, the year during the time I was active, during New Bern's 
300th anniversary ah. back in 2010. Okay. And uh, the program was held at the convention center, mm -hmm. and it was magnificent. I'm sure it was the phenomenal. The title of it was 300 Years of Trailblazers and Game Changers. Yes. And what we did was we went all the way back as far as we could in New Bern's history mm -hmm. to find African-American women included and other women who uh, contributed to New Bern. Wow. And we had back who, the one who was born in 1710. Well, the, we went from 1710 through 1760. It says a multicultural community setting the stage for New Bern's multicultural community, women of Chautauqua, Madam Mary Vale Moore, an in Igbo woman who was born in 1745. Madam Mary, Madam Mary Vale Moore was born in 1705 and died in 1764. Then we came from 1760 to 1810, and they were called the newcomers. Among them was an African-American woman named Amelia Green. Her dates were 1760 through 1823. Another was Kitty Stanley, who was born in 1870. She was wife of John Carruthers Stanley, a found, and she was also a founding member of First Presbyterian wow, Church. Wow, okay. Right around the corner from where we are right Yes, now. awesome. Yeah, and there's a plaque in the church that recognizes her and all the other founding members. I believe there were 13 in all. Okay. And she was one of the 13 founding members. So uh, we pay tribute to them. We also had uh, Into the Future from 1860 to 1910. We just played music from that era. Mm -hmm. 1910 to 1960, we did the Foxtrot. Okay. And then as we looked into the future, we went from 1960 to 2010. Some of the other ladies we recognized was Mary Connor, Emmeline Pickett, and Mary Ann Starkey. They were um, they were outstanding trailblazers during 1810 and 1860. And then from 1860 to 1910, we had our visionaries who was Maud Moore Lathan, who was a philanthropist and benefactor who established a trust fund to pay for the restoration of Tryon Palace. Wow. So we were all inclusive. Yeah. All of the black and white mm -hmm. ladies in our community and uh, some who uh, I think Native American as well. We also had Sarah Dudley Petty, who was a freeborn African American woman of former slaves, an educator, a pioneer writer writer, and early woman suffragist. Nice. And then I'm going to bring it all home. All right now. From 1910 to 1960, we recognized Dr. Lula Disseswey, who was born in 1897 and died in 1973. She was a medical missionary of the Episcopal Church in China and Alaska from 1927 through 1947. She subsequently served as director of Good Shepherd Hospital from about 1954 until 1967. Then we had a nurse here named Nurse Beatrice Dudley, who was a public health nurse with Craven County Health Department. Mm -hmm. We had Bertha K. for Dudley, Duffy, who was an early Red Cross leader and community charity worker who provided assistance to the local health department, which was responsible for welfare. We had uh, Mary Fisher Harris, who founded the first cosmetology school in Eastern North Carolina for African Americans. And we had Mary Gordon Latham Kellenberger, who was appointed by Governor W. Carr Scott to succeed her mother as chairman of the Triumph Palace Commission, and at her death, left exclusively for the town of New Bern the legacy of the Kellenberger Foundation for historical and preservation related projects. Awesome. That's awesome. So we had a lot of ladies and I'll just continue to read just a few names and okay. then we'll move on. But this was such a um a tremendous program. 
and it was so inclusive of both black and white women in New Bern. Yes. Theta Beta needs to uh, be recognized and acknowledged for this effort back in 2010, 2010. the mm -hmm. year that the city of New Bern celebrated um, its 300th anniversary. We celebrated the women of New Bern through the first 300 years who had done outstanding things. That's beautiful. And I'll end out by just calling these names for the 1960s up to 2010. Mrs. Ella Bingle, Mrs. Gertrude Spray Carraway, Miss Thelma Chadwick, Miss Annie B. Gibbs, Miss Barbara Lee, Miss Susan Moffat Thomas, Mrs. Hazel B. Neal, Mrs. Kathleen Oringa, Beverly E. Perdue, Governor, Mary Peterkin, Miss Mary Randolph, Miss Ethel B. Sampson, Miss Renee Sisk, Miss Patricia Ann Spicer. Ms. K. Philip Williams. So we acknowledge these ladies from New Bern's first 300 years. And I don't think anyone else did anything like that during New Bern's celebration. But the Theta Beta Omega chapter of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority made that their part in celebrating New Bern's 300th anniversary. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. That's beautiful. That could actually um, triggered another thought that I didn't bring the program, but in, I believe it was 2019, we, instead of, that was supposed to have been one of our dead ball years, but instead of doing that, we did the Image Awards, where we um, recognized some of the local people in our community that did a lot in the middle of the pandemic to help out others in the community. And I, I um, forgive me for, for not bringing that program, but I just did, I wanted to mention that that program was something that we did in 2019 to recognize the local people, the heroes of the of that time. Because there are many. Right. All need to be acknowledged and recognized. Right, right. Oh, sorry, I said the pandemic. That wasn't the pandemic at the time. That was the, the hurricane that the hurricane. happened. The hurricane. That was the hurricane. That was right before. <laughs> that was before the pandemic. That was the hurricane that happened, and it was some serious flooding. Yeah. And there was a lot of people that helped out in the community during that time. Oh, definitely, it yes. was. And uh, that's what well, that's well, a lot of things wonderful about New Bern to me. That's yeah. why I am so happy to be a, and privileged, I believe, to be a part of this organization, the African American Heritage Culture. Center. Yes, because. The history, all of New Bern is so important, and uh, being able to keep the African American history part alive is is a part of New Bern, mm -hmm. and I love the history yes. of New Bern. Yes. So yeah, that, that that's very important. Yes, 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 very, 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 and um, some of the other recent programs that we've done, um, when when they were having the vaccination clinics a couple of years back. We did some volunteering at the vaccination clinics. We had 5,000 masks that we donated to different organizations in the community. And um, we, we actually did another donation of masks just recently. We had a um, COVID-19 webinar that we did just to, to get information out into the community about the, the, the virus and the importance of the vaccine. So that was some information that we, that we did um, through our chapter. We've done some um, toiletry donations to the, the women's shelter and also um, collected and donated 400 pairs of shoes to Souls for Souls. And I just wanted to say, <laughs> these shoes came out of our own closet. So we, <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of shoes. <laughs> we collected. If I had known, it would have been more. <laughs> <laughs> we collected 400 pairs of shoes to donate to Souls for Souls. So That's great. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to share with us this afternoon? Um, there are just um, a few notable things that I wanted to mention just from different members in our chapter. Um, our member, B. Smith, was Craven County's first African-American female commissioner. She was also the first African-American female to hold a principalship in the integrated Craven County school system. And now we have two members of our chapter that are principals in the area, so it just comes around full circle. Uh, we have Tracy Shope, who is the assistant district attorney for prosecutorial district number four. Um, Barbara Perry was the first black State Farm insurance agent in New Bern. 
Uh, Joy Malone is the executive director of IT for Durham Public Schools. That's not in the area, but I am always a big proponent of women, especially black women, in IT and STEM careers. Oh, yeah. So that is something that is very important to me because I, I work in IT also, but I, I, and I just love to see women in those kind of careers. And at a director level, that's definitely something you don't see very often. Exactly. And uh, yes, we also have um, Samantha Watkins, who is a homeowner services coordinator for Habitat for Humanity. So she's helping a lot of people in our community find homes. And that's another thing that I think is just such a beautiful thing. And I believe a former student. I believe so. (laughs) I believe so. Yes. (laughs) Right. You know, it's, you know, really so wonderful. And as you said, I know uh, with Mrs. Smith coming out of education, she was just previously serving on the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. She had been on that for many years. And um, the great service that your mother provided. Yes. I remember during, I think it was Hurricane Floyd, a tree fell on my parents' home Mm. and did major damage. Wow. And she was so compassionate and helpful to my parents. Yes. uh, that and I know not only my parents but I can I am speaking from experience yes but everybody knows Miss Barbara Perry right the great work that she does yes and all of them is Tracy Shope they have really continued to contribute so much to our community definitely yes and um, it's a great thing to be able to uh, ex- experience the sisterhood through Appa Kappa Alpha mm-hmm. sorority and their service to yes. mankind and that's still right. goes on. Exactly. And to all be a part of that. Yes. Very yes, yes, yes. And um, for those that want to connect with us, we do have a Facebook page. Okay. And it is um, facebook.com forward slash T-B-O-A-K-A. And the website for Theta Beta Omega is aka Theta Beta Omega dot com. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. I know a lot will be probably contacting you. All. Yes. And um, again, I think we're just about done. Is there anything else before we close out? No, um, I think we have covered a lot. And I'm just, again, very thankful for you allowing me to um, join you today. I, we are very thankful. And uh, again, on behalf of the African American Heritage Culture Center, we thank you for participating and uh We ask that you um, be aware of our mission, continuing to keep the African-American history of this region uh, alive, active, and be a part of it and share in some of the different things that uh, we partner with others. Uh, Juneteenth is coming up. Yes. There's a week of events, and we are included in that. Okay. Uh, And uh, we we are on our board, we have acquired two new members. Uh, one is the uh, director of the Underground Railroad from Little Washington area, Ms. Wow. Lisa. Hmm. And the other one is more local, Mrs. Valerie Best. She has joined our board. And we look to continue to do great things and to develop this oral history. Yes, very so important. So that it can become richer. Yes. So again, we thank you. It's been great. Yes, thank you.